Many Magic the Gathering players ask the question, is it worth it to buy a Challenger deck? Your local game store holds Magic the Gathering events from Friday Night Magic to the standard showdown to other in-store events throughout the week. For new and returning players, attending these events has often been difficult, as booster packs are designed with the draft format in mind and not constructed, thus buying tons of booster packs to crack in order to build a competitive Friday Night Magic standard deck has never been an easy, affordable, or even successful strategy. The only alternative, however, has been downloading deck lists and buying singles to build a complete deck from scratch, an expensive option considering standard decks usually run in the hundreds of dollars, if not more. Challenger decks seek to offer what has never before been done, a self-contained, pre-constructed standard deck which can be bought at an affordable price and played effectively and competitively at Friday Night Magic or other in-store events, right out of the box. With an MSRP of $29.99, these Challenger decks would need to offer quite a lot to new and returning players. So do they rise to the challenge, or is the interest in them misplaced? Let's take a look. Now, for the record, Wizards has attempted products like this before, most notably with the long-running product line of event decks. But as my own reviews cover, if you are curious on the details, event decks were almost always terrible right out of the box. Technically playable at F&M, but not something that put up much, if any, of a fight. A newer returning player using an event deck would likely end up in last place, and many times did not even have a framework from which to build a competitive deck. Event decks were jank, containing one to two copies of largely unplayed cards, never mythics, and never value. Now, one criticism many of my videos have had in the past is an overemphasis on the importance of financial value in products such as these. My answer to that is simple. When products of the past, such as event decks, were so terrible, so unplayable at an event, so failing in the very thing they were designed to do, then all there was really left to look at was its financial value. Now, in the case of Challenger decks, everyone seems to be talking about financial value because these decks contain mythics and play sets and play sets of mythics. But for me, I don't really care as much this time. I do not care one bit, in fact, about whether the sum total of the individual cards within these $29.99 decks are worth $60, $80, or even only $10 each. I will still look at financial value later in the video, but what matters here is the degree to which these are playable right out of the box at Friday Night Magic. Section 1, an on-ramp to standard. The first noteworthy thing Thing about Challenger decks is how strikingly close they are to the fully polished and refined decks that the pros run, not at Friday Night Magic, but at highly competitive events. Yes, there is still room for upgrades. Yes, there are still ways to make these lists better, but just look at the similarities. At GP Seattle just last weekend, just days ago, Mardu Vehicles made top eight, and the list run by Andrew Shane has a lot in common with the contents of the Vehicle Rush deck. Looking at Shane's list, he was running four Bomac Couriers, one of the most played cards in Standard right now, and yes, Vehicle Rush contains a full playset. Shane's list ran four Toolcraft Exemplars, and the Challenger deck also runs four. Four Scrap Heap Scroungers in the GP Top 8 deck list, and a playset in the Challenger deck a pair of Pia Nalar in both. Of course, Andrew's top eight deck list ran a playset of the mythic card Heart of Kirin, but here too in Mardu Vehicles there is a playset of Heart of Kirin. A playset of Spire of Industry in both. Now, obviously, this deck list is not an exact copy of a standard deck that made top eight the very weekend it came out. 
My understanding is that these lists had to be finalized approximately three to four months ago to be sold now, but I am showing these matching inclusions to help emphasize that these decks are giving you a great on-ramp to standard. And yes, it is still just an on-ramp, as you can see by the fact that that winning top eight deck list has, for example, four concealed courtyards, four dragon skull summits, and three canyon sloughs in the mana base. And the challenger deck has only one dragon skull summit, one concealed courtyard, and no canyon sloughs. Most notable is that the GP top eight list was running three Hazret the Fervent and one Rekindling Phoenix and Vehicle Rush runs neither. However, Hazaret the Fervent is included in the aptly named Hazaret Aggro Challenger deck. But the decks don't have to be fully upgraded tier 1 decks that have a 99% match to what a pro player is top 8-ing a GP with. They just have to be playable right out of the box at Friday Night Magic and allow new and returning players to the game, or just new and returning players to standard, to put up a reasonable fight, to have that reasonable chance at winning with with them. These decks do so amazingly, and it's as though those fully upgraded professional lists have been taken and lowered maybe just one notch at most. Indeed, as you'll remember, I mentioned Hazaret the Fervent is included in Hazaret Red, which is essentially Ramunumunumu map red, whatever, just classic red deck wins, let's call it. Red deck wins is the deck that took first place at GP Seattle. And just as Vehicle Rush has a plethora of identical inclusions with the Mardu vehicles list being run, so too does Hazaret Red share a lot in common with the very deck that took first place this last weekend. Both have playsets of fanatical firebrands as well as playsets of the highly in demand Bomat Courier. The winning list by Gan was also running four on crop crashers, four lightning strikes, and two abrades, and so too does this Hazaret deck run. And even though Gan's list has three shocks, whereas the Challenger deck has a full four, the synchronicity here or near synchronicity is fantastic. Which does not mean there aren't critical differences, as yes, this first place deck had a full play set of Hazarets, a full play set of Rekindling Phoenixes, and a pair of both Chandra Torch of Defiance and Glorybringers, while the Hazaret Red Challenger deck has only one Hazaret, one Chandra, one Glorybringer, and no Rekindling Phoenix. But the framework is there, the mythics are there. Heck, this is a pre constructed deck with a Planeswalker in it, not to mention the mythics and playsets, and while no, it is not identical to what is literally the first place deck at a major GP, but it is strikingly close. Playable out of the box at your local local game store? Absolutely. And the other decks hold up in the same way. Second Sun Control is basically blue-white Second Sun's approach, a deck that has shifted to blue-red but is still one that has a lot in common with the five, count them five, lists that showed up in the top 16 of GP Seattle, the only deck not represented at that GP being Counter Surge, which is essentially a Golgari Constrictor list, but again, that list is built around a powerful and represented deck that is playable at Friday Night Magic that will go for you right out of the box to those matches and let you sit down and play with something very similar to what the pros run. Debate can and has been had about which of these is the best of the four and the worst of the four, but my concern is that all of them are FNM viable, competitive right out of the box. And regardless, regardless of whether your $29.99 is getting you more or less than $29.99 in value, these are getting you some something better. The ability to pick up a box and play Magic the Gathering at your local game store. That being said, let's take a look at financial value. Section 2, Financial Value. A little over one month ago, I did a Tolarian Wins video discussing whether Challenger decks were essentially standard masters. While not an Is It Worth It video, because this is the Is It Worth It video, the one you're watching right now. I looked in that video at the value of each Challenger deck, if you were to buy the cards individually, what it would cost. Now this was, of course, back on March 6th, and you can see that prices were more than double MSRP for the contents then. Now, as of the filming of this video on April 10th, 
After having been released this previous weekend, prices have of course continued to plummet. But the value of these cards is just so high that their overall contents still hasn't come down to MSRP. To buy the individual contents of Second Sun Control would cost you $41.33, Counter Surge would be $49.30, Vehicle Rush $52.13, and Hazard Agro $54.56. Yes, prices will continue to drop, and I am imagine within the next few weeks they will eventually hit or perhaps even dip below MSRP. In addition, as the meta continues to shift and Dominaria comes out, the value will then likely go below that of MSRP much more dramatically. And no doubt there will be countless options to begin upgrading and transforming these decks into what is more and more effective in the new meta. Section 4 problems and area for improvement. The issue that is the biggest problem is actual rotation, which happens with the release of the fall set, meaning these decks have approximately six months in standard before they are no longer legal. This fall, when the as of yet unnamed set is released, let's just call it Return to Return to Ravnica, why not? Kaladesh and Amonkhet blocks will leave standard, making all of these challenger decks completely unplayable in standard and containing next to nothing in value. That means there is a massive, massive expiration date on these, and also that anyone buying them in July or August is going to get next to no use from them. The solution, of course, is not one of months, but weeks. If Wizards continues with Challenger decks, and I hope very much that they do, they must struggle to cut the needed printing and distribution time as much as they possibly can. Even adding one week, getting these out one week earlier would be a great improvement in terms of longevity, and each additional week, heck, each additional day that they can get these to market sooner is a win, is improving this product, is possibly adding a plus sign. And it can be done. Wizards of the Coast sent evaluation samples to many creators as far back as one month ago. Not me, of course. I got them essentially on the day of release because there's no telling what crazy critical professor is going to say, so don't send him the samples a month early. No, 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 no. But Anyway, here we can see from other creators that the Challenger decks were made, packaged, and wrapped, and able to be shipped back as early as, wow, the beginning of March. And by the way, if you aren't already watching Young Mage's YouTube channel, it's really awesome, and you should totally check it out. Links in this video's description. Again, here we actually see video proof that they had the Challenger decks sealed, packaged, they could have been sent out out one month ago. So that means in the future, they can accomplish getting these out sooner, getting these on the shelves. So that's the solution. Get them on the shelves sooner. Section four, alternatives. Now, just because these have a short lifespan and may be up on the clearance rack soon before and certainly after rotation, doesn't mean that there aren't other uses for challenger decks. Obviously, any of these cards seeing regular play in formats such as Modern gives an eternal value to the product even after rotation, which, by the way, is just reason 2,511 why supporting formats like Modern can actually sell product and make profit for your company, but I digress. Near or after rotation, these will likely be heavily discounted, so why not build an amazing battle box with them? By taking all four decks, sleeving them up, and putting them together, you can have a really great and enjoyable four deck battle box. These four decks are from the same standard and consistently showing up in top lists of events. So they are great fun to play against each other, but also skill intensive. You and a friend can each randomly pick one from the box to get games against each other gauntlet style, even after standard has rotated. Or have three to four friends play a standard level free for all in a multiplayer melee. Dual decks have now been discontinued, but if you are spending the weekend at a friend's house and want to get some great games, then grab two challenger decks for kitchen table gameplay, especially if they're discounted because rotation is coming up or just happened. Even after rotation, these decks play great against one another and can be loads of fun. But of course, the best and most clever use of these is grabbing one for the ability to sit down and play without spending forever assembling and testing a standard deck 
from a list. Just pick up a Challenger deck instead. Final conclusion? Challenger decks are the best pre-constructed product for standard that Wizards of the Coast has ever made. They do what so many, many other products have failed to accomplish. Allow for someone to make one purchase and then sit down and play standard at their local game store. The biggest con is that since standard rotates once per year, these decks will rotate in six months. But even so, upon and for a time after release, these decks are the perfect on-ramp to standard for new players, or for existing players who do not have a standard deck. Finally, after 25 years, Wizards of the Coast has given us the ability to buy real Magic the Gathering decks that embrace rather than shy away from what true Magic decks look like in standard. For any player looking to get into standard, there is no better buy. And there's even a lot of applications for casual kitchen table fun. Grade, it's a solid, enthusiastic A. I hope very much this video has been of some help to you. You can help me out by remembering to like, share, subscribe, or just by leaving a message. What do you think of Challenger decks? Are you going to pick one up? Will you buy one if this comes out again next year? Do you want to see it come out again next year? Let me know in the comments below. And this video is brought to you by my and many other people's local game store, Card Kingdom, a brick and mortar pillar of this community, as well as the Patreon support of viewers such as you. These are the people that keep Talarian Community College going and growing strong. So thank you.